What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to you with another edition of Liddy's Leads, Likes, and Locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification. Gnarly dude goes a long way for me on this video. It goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize and have a great content goes live here. The little neck of the YouTube woods. I don't know why I'm doing that. I really don't know why I do a lot of the things I do. I do know why I combined Blake Snell 7Ks with San Diego Moneyline. That ended up working out very nicely for everybody in the premium Discord. Good stuff. You know what didn't? Shane McClanahan getting hurt. Ended up betting him just to get a win. And uh, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do about that. That's a tough one. But either way, ended up having just a tiny bit of profit uh, on the get-go. I need actually Randy or Rosarena to hit a home run. Otherwise, I will lose a quarter unit on the day. What a time to be alive. Most flat Thursday that I can possibly remember. Uh, seven and a half that we had in the pit. Miami game moved to seven. Hopefully you guys caught Lindy's leans. Uh, sorry, Lindy's locks update. That's the great stuff over on Twitter. You can catch that all the time, my friends. Great stuff. But of course that game went over. So that was absolutely pen punitive to me. Hurt my feelings because I was on the under of that seven and a half. And I apologize. I will do better today. But we've been running really, really good here on this program. If it's your first time checking in, um, at least you didn't check it in Thursday. That's good stuff. But if it's also your first time checking us out, BetMGM, that is where you want to be signed up because we want you having exposure to multiple books. It's what we preach here at Odd Shopper. It's why it is called Odd Shopper. So you can always find the best line, shopping for the best odds every single day, whether it's at DraftKings, FanDuel, or BetMGM. I don't care. Just find the best lines because in the long run, that's how you are going to sustain a bankroll. It's how you're going to actually make money doing this over any long sample size. So please do it. Cool. Great. It's only if you're 21 and over. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. But we have 15. Well, actually, I lied. We have 14 games. I don't even know the two teams that aren't playing. Who cares? Uh, they don't matter to us because we can't bet on them. Let's go to bet MGM. Let's go to FanDuel. Let's go to all the books here right now. I got producer Jay. Uh, well, I almost screwed up his name. Producer Jacob sitting side saddle here, my friend. What? It's going to be. It's going to be OK. It's going to be OK. We're having a conversation. Just him and I don't mind us. You know what? Let's roll the tape. Let's get to the picks. Atlanta at Cincinnati, and I was just told that because um, I wasn't watching the game, let's be serious. Why would I want to watch Pittsburgh and Miami? But seven runs were scored in the eighth inning for me to lose that bet? Are you kidding me? That's how we're going to start this program. Okay, great. Atlanta at Cincinnati, over 10 and a half. I like it. Next game. Oh, I guess I should probably give some analysis. That's fine. All right, here you go. We're going to finish this one up. Ah, I'm in a great mood. We've got Atlanta. We've got Cincinnati, the red hot Cincinnati Reds. It's why they're called the Reds. But they have freaking Luke Weaver on the mound going up against A.J. Smith Chauver of the Braves. And he's been pretty good so far. He ended up having his start rained. Actually, actually what happened was that Thursday ended up being pushed and they had it rain out on Wednesday and now he's pitching Friday. You know what? It's a whole thing. Just know that A.J. smith Shaver expected to be on the mound with a 2.64 expected ERA. That's pretty good, my friends. Now an 18.2 degree average launch angle. That's where I get a little bit nervous about this young man. I don't believe that he's going to be just lights out immediately based on some of the things in his pitch mix. Has he been great so far in a very short sample size? There is no questioning that. That is not what I'm here to do. But what I'm looking at on the other side are the Cincinnati Reds in this ballpark. And if you are not perfect from time to time, especially as a young pitcher, you can get yourself knocked up. Hell, if you're an experienced pitcher like Luke Weaver, you can get yourself knocked up. Now, he's not good at this stage of his career. It is what it is. A 491 expected slugging, 353 X Woba. That, my friends, is not good. 5.23 expected ERA, 6.47 ERA. He's the worst of the starters that they have going through that rotation. Now, they've had some injuries up and down the entire Cincinnati, uh, almost said bullpen, starting rotation. But that being said, I still think Cincinnati puts up some runs on that side. And then Atlanta, hmm, they're pretty good. They're going to be going up against uh, Luke Weaver. Yeah, Atlanta's got a 112 WRC plus in the best homer-friendly ballpark in baseball. Of course, I'm on the over of 10 and a half. I get why this number opened at 10 and a half, but I'd be shocked if you weren't staring at 11s and 11 and a halves across the board tomorrow come first pitch. I think Smith Schauver going to be a test against this Red Hot Cincinnati team, but it's also not great to beat Luke Weaver tomorrow. Definitely on the over for a half unit.
just kind of realizing how heartbroken I was because I did watch the Tampa Bay start. I wanted to see Shane McClanahan start after I ended up on the win for him. He ends up leaving with mid-back tightness. That sucks. Sometimes people get hurt in sports and there's not a damn thing you can do about it, but it's why you try to make the best wagers you can every single day, regardless of the results. And that's why we're staying away from this game this time around. We have Tampa Bay hosting Kansas City yet again. Zach Eflin, who's been awesome this season. Again, Zach Granke, who's been awful for like five seasons, but continues to pitch in the big leagues because he is, I don't know. I don't know why he is. Once upon a time, Cy Young guy, once upon a time. It was a long time ago. 492 expected slugging, 288 expected batting average. And you look at these Tampa Bay bats on the other side. They've got to be happy about this. 125 WRC plus against righty uh, pitching do they have on the season. 198 ISO. Both of those marks, best in baseball. But minus one and a half, as I'm looking at this for Zach Eflin, as much as I love him, it is so hard for me to get behind this line at this kind of a number. We're talking minus 250, minus 260, minus 275. Hell, you saw that number move all the way to minus 330, 350 with Shane McClanahan on the mound. Maybe some closing line value if it had gone to the money line, but I will still argue that that was a little bit too wide for me. When you talk about Bobby Witt, Sal Perez, two righty mashers, or sorry, lefty mashers in that lineup. Well, at least here, Eflin, you have an opportunity to maybe survive and have some fun because you have a 269 XWOBA, a 4.3% walk rate, 25.5% K rate. You learned how to pitch. The sinker and cutter combination is just working. And you have the platoon advantage in those situations. So friends, oh friends, I must go ahead and avoid this game like the plague. Yeah, we'll look at home runs once again, see if there's anything to mine out of it. But Tampa Bay minus one and a half, that would grade out as the play, but I'm there's no play here. Every line, as I'm looking at it, perfectly efficient. If the public shifts this thing way north again, I apologize. It's still not a good bet. My Minnesota Twins heading to Detroit here, and I'm kind of excited for this one. And well, why? Kenta Maeda. He's back, baby. Hasn't pitched since April 26th that had been a second. He had a tricep injury that shut him down really, really early, and that's why... Oh, he had a 9 ERA through four starts. Had been a little bit problematic for him there. Gave up 10 earned against the Yankees. They shut him down as they should. He's 35. I don't know what we're going to get out of him here. All I know is that you had seen him giving up three straight games with home runs to start off his season. Giving up power to lefties and righties alike. And, well, you do have Kerry Carpenter. You have Matt Verling. You have a couple of pieces there with some power. But we got one guy we're going to highlight, star, circle, and throw into the mix here. But first, I'll at least give you the skinny on Detroit. Joey Wentz. He's terrible at pitching. Good. Okay. Glad we covered him. Kenta Maeda, though, he's also a little bit struggle bussy and uh, not feeling all that, not getting the warm and fuzzies. Kenta Maeda with the Dodgers, really fun. With the Twins before he got hurt, fun too. Not so fun lately. A lot of power up there. A lot of power waiting on deck with one Spencer Torkelson. This guy was the number one prospect in baseball, had about the most atrocious season you could possibly expect from a number one first round pick, we're talking the number one pick, Victor, Victor Wimbanyama of the baseball streets, if you will. Uh, also, how did Scoot not go to? What are we doing here? Anyway, Spencer Torkelson, last season, 272 Woba. We're talking a 24.5% K rate. Couldn't put ball on baseball to save his freaking life atrocious across the board in every single way, a slash line of 203, 285, 319. It's not much better with 224, 305, 375, but friends, oh friends, he has as many home runs this season as he had all of last season. That's wild to say out loud. And the stat cast data is definitely backing him as quote unquote back. It's really gonna have to do with what the price is because Detroit is not the best ballpark for home runs, definitely more of a doubles ballpark. Look that one up. Enjoy baseball, Savon, and enjoy breaking down ballparks. One of my favorite things to do. But Spencer Torkelson, 48.5% hard hit percentage, 434 expected slugging. Yeah. Can we get better than plus 450 for him to home run? If we do, Kenta Maeda? Yeah, we're going to try to play T-ball against him here. Yeah, it's my team. I don't have any allegiance when it comes to betting. We try to make money. Spencer Torkelson to homer. Let's go. Seriously, seven runs in the eighth inning. 
S seven runs in the eighth inning. Seven runs in the eighth inning. Oh, my God. Jesus Cesardo and the Miami Marlins here going up against Luis Ortiz and the Pittsburgh Pirates. The same things we talked about before apply here. It's a great ballpark for pitching. We got closing line value. If you bet it at seven and a half on Thursday night or on Wednesday night leading into Thursday and then closes at seven with heavy juice on the under. Mitch Keller's out there being perfect. Seven innings pitched, one earned. Miami just goes nuts. Whatever. Generally, that bodes well to try to get on a team on the next day. So we are going to be targeting Luis Ortiz in this one. Now, because of the ballpark, you are going to run into spots where it is very hard to get a ton of value on the run line. I hope we can go through this. This might be actually what I cover tomorrow on, Lin on Lindy's Locks update. But I want you to understand why I'm on the run line for Miami as opposed to on minus 170, minus 165 on the money line. It's definitely a more aggressive number. It's definitely a more difficult number long term because, well, it's plus money attached to it. You're probably not even hitting it half the time. But you don't need to. And that's where the fun begins for you because you're looking at a best available number of plus 130 on this run line. In, in order to, it's a DraftKings sports book for all the people who want to know, considering this is a lock, I should probably tell you some of that, but it's actually a like, it's actually a like, I'm just thinking about locking it. Probably not going to be locking it. It would be the third lock on the board if I had to go somewhere here, but part of it has to do with Pittsburgh. Complete collapse there. Uh, you are using up somebody who would generally be one of your hold guys there, Moreta, who again, three earned. And then they bring in Mold Moldzinski. I'm a little bit unhappy about both of those individuals here at the moment. But overall, Luis Ortiz, not the best profile. He was a pitcher we were excited about, just seeing if the stuff translated didn't back him at any point. But a 394 x but 296 expected batting average at a 15% K rate. Nothing is looking all that good here. Miami, yeah, they've been decent against righties. 93 or whatever it is, WRC plus. What they are is they're improved against righties. There we go. That's the right way of saying it because they're still below average in the bigs with that 93 WRC plus. But you have Hazel Lazardo on the mound, 26.9% K rate, 308 XWO, but 234 expected batting average. Because of how far down Sandy Alcantara has regressed, Hazel Lazardo has kind of carried the torch here for the Marlins and this starting staff. You know, they've gotten decent stuff out of Braxton Garrett from time to time, but Jesus Cesardo is still the lefty who's out there spinning it with the four-seamer slider combo. The barrels, you got to be a little bit worried about it. 12.2% barrel percentage. But Brian Reynolds, that was the big news. That's what we were there targeting. They did get Andrew McCutcheon back in that lineup, so that, that was a little bit frustrating. But Brian Reynolds on the IL officially with lower back inflammation, my friends. Going to be a spot where run creation is going to be difficult for Pittsburgh, going to be better on the other side, and we're getting more than that plus 100. And I, I will talk about this tomorrow at some point because we have two run lines that are locks on this card, both in the minus section. We're going to be getting aggressive here on Friday. Try to keep this momentum going. Miami, minus one and a half on the run line. We are backing them at this plus 130 number on DraftKings Sportsbook. Our old friend Kadai Senga Genesis going up against the Phillies here in this spot. Yes, Mets, Phillies. And Phillies on the other side, Taiwan Walker finally showing up. He was supposed to pitch two days ago. Do I really have to break this guy down again? I suppose it's my job. So yeah, Taiwan Walker, we'll start with him. 41% hard hit percentage, 327 X Woba. You have some Mets. They're starting to come alive. Tommy Pham. Way to go. It really rebounded in the stat cast department after a really, really slow start to the season. 51.4% hard hit percentage, nearly a 400 X Woba, and a 298 expected batting average, even a 553 expected uh, slugging percentage that we're looking at from him. That hasn't translated into a ton of home runs. He's sitting right at seven on the season. He might be somebody that we have to be paying close attention to pending those numbers. Yeah, I got other home run plays on the card from time to time. They've been hitting it up very high clip this season. So we're going to keep running it. But one thing that hasn't been very hot for me at any point until lately when Blake Snell, all of a sudden I'm backing him. I don't even know what I believe in anymore. But K props, we have not necessarily been putting a ton of them on the card, mainly because books have really focused on them. It's a public bet. People like them a lot. But there's been some inefficient numbers here of late. And uh, well, 
I'm hoping one of them can be Kadai Senga tomorrow. You sometimes have to attach it to another play, make it a same game parlay over at BetMGM, make it a single game parlay over at DraftKings or FanDuel, doing things of that nature. But Kadai Senga, as long as he's not walking dudes, the Ks are going to be there. We've seen nine and eight Ks in the last two games where he's had one or fewer walks. They've been in two of his last four against Philadelphia and St. Louis. Smack dab in the middle of that are four and five walks against Pittsburgh and Toronto. So it really comes down to how you feel could I Senga profiles against these Philadelphia Phillies? Well, I think it's a tough matchup. I think there's a ton of power with Kyle Schwarber, with Bryce Harper, obviously from the left side, 103 WRC plus against righties, but also a 23.4% K rate, which is the, uh, it's number nine. So top 10 in baseball, Philadelphia Phillies striking out against right-handed pitching. And Kadai Senga, he brings that ghost for to town. Just please, man, 13.4% walk rate. Don't waste at bats. Try to just throw it down and out to Kyle Schwarber. Look at the heat map. Study your game. Let's go, son. Kadai Senga up to 8Ks as long as the 7.5 is getting major plus money. But I think you're looking at a line of 5.5. That's probably going to be juiced up a little bit. Pay close attention, but I think I want to be pushing this to eight in K ladder fashion. I know you have DraftKings Sportsbook. I know you have FanDuel Sportsbook. What? Get exposure to all the sportsbooks you can. That's why it's called Odd Shopper, my friends. And this is BetMGM, and there's a couple of reasons you should check them out. One, they have some of the best lines when it comes to hitter props, and then they've been they've been having some pretty weak totals there of late, some totals that are just a, a half run off here or a half run off there. You know what that allows? It allows us to take advantage of the marketplace. That is what Odd Shopper is all about. But you're also going to get access to two months to the premium Discord where... Um, I think my friends below will let you know that they've been having a fun couple of weeks here. That's for sure. NBA season was a smash out of the park. And after a couple of weak beginning weeks to the MLB season, besides home run props, which has just stayed red hot for whatever reason, I can't even explain it. It defies logic. Uh, we've heated up in the month of June, absolutely smashing it in the marketplace. But it's not just myself and my betting card. We've had college World Series experts, it would seem, Ben Raza, and Isaiah Suarez, who's just been smashing those streets day in, day out. They are absolutely betting analysts, absolute geniuses when it comes to betting across the marketplace. Get their betting cards every single day. It is a huge, important deal that you need to have added to your betting repertoire. Having these guys who can give you the plays, the keys to sports you might not know anything about. I don't know anything about international soccer besides, you know, Messi's really good. I like watching Portugal from time to time. Not the Ronaldo version. I like Man United in my real life. Those are things that I enjoy. But what I'm getting at is that I'm not betting anything in the soccer marketplace. But you have Ben Raz in there who can fire it up for you. Enough there. But that's not all that there is over at BetMGM. You also have the opportunity to get yourself up to $1,000 back in bonus bets on your first bet, even if it loses. So there you go. You could take $1,000 or $20 or $50 or whatever you feel comfortable with, all the way up to that $1,000. You can fire it up and your first bet, no matter what happens, is coming back to you in bonus bets if it loses. So put a thousand bucks on a big plus money dog. If it hits, you keep all the money and it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for gambling. Check it all out, my friends. But if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. And it's only if you're 21 and over. All right, we continue on our merry way. 10 more games to go. I'm terrified, friends. I'm kind of terrified of this lock. But it is grading out so damn well for me. And maybe it's just my personal bias and what I do to my model. Whenever Kyle Gibson's on a mound, I don't like him. I do not like him, Sam. I am. I do not like him with green eggs and ham, but I like him to give up runs to this Seattle team facing off against him. Logan Gilbert on the mound here for the Mariners. This is a phenomenal spot. And I expected to see Seattle favorite. Now, it's not because they went into Yankee Stadium and just punched the Yankees in the mouth, currently up 10 0 in the sixth inning of that game. No, my friends. No, 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 no. We are staring at a huge disparity in terms of pitching matchup. You got Logan Gilbert, 300 X Woba, 26% K rate, 5% walk rate. And Kyle Gibson on the other side, 42.3% hard hit, oh, nominal difference. But a 335 X Woba, 269 expecting batting average, and just a 17.7% K rate. Friends, if you're giving up contact in Baltimore, two lefties, 
you are in a lot of trouble eventually because there is still the opportunity to hit it out to right field there. Left field is a freaking cavern, so righties, uh, enjoy Ingenio Suarez, Teoscar Hernandez. Maybe try to go Apo Taco if I were you. But Jared Kelnick, J.P. Crawford, even Colton Wong went yard there on Thursday, which feels like everything that I know about in the world has changed after that. Jose Caballero leading off there. Lots of opportunities, I think, friends. Well, not leading off, sorry. That was completely a lie. It's the back half of the lineup. But either way, I'm looking at the Seattle lineup as I have it projected, and they should go in and be able to handle Kyle Gibson around a 60% clip. And yet, this line opens at minus 105. That is a pretty large disparity. We're talking about a 6% in terms of expected win percentage based on what that line is sitting at at minus 105. That is a gigantic difference that I have. I would have Seattle around minus 120, minus 125 in this spot. And yet we are running into a, a large difference there, a 20 cent difference. That makes it a lot, my friends. Pretty easy, straightforward play for me. Uh, again, it's terrifying because Baltimore is a lineup that we've been backing routinely, and they do have lefty power too. Anthony Santander for both sides. Gunnar Henderson, uh, lefty. Adley Rushman, both sides. I mean, it's just... There's some nonstop lefties, but they're still without Cedric Mullins. Ryan O'Hearn, I don't believe this 518 expected slugging 55.9% hard hit percentage. And I swear to God, if Adam Frazier goes yard and if Aaron Hicks with his 29% hard hit percentage keeps hitting it out of the park, I'm going to lose my mind. Might be worth the price of admission anyway. So there you go. Seattle money line. We are locking them up. I think I had said that they were on the run line before. That was a complete lie. Seattle money line. That is the play. It's a lock. Heading to Yankee Stadium where um, they forgot how to play baseball on Thursday. Pretty funny if you ask me. Uh, just getting completely lit up. We've got an interesting pitching matchup here. And it's, well, there's two different spots projecting two different things. And I'm not really sure entirely what to make of it, but... The board got taken. Or, I mean, there's no line available. It just is what it is. Luis Severino, Dane Dunning is who I expected to be out there, but there's also some different listings where it's Clark Schmidt on the mound for the Yankees. Either way, Clark Schmidt and this guy, I mean, Severino's just been pitching terrible so far this season. 383 X Woba for him, 515 expected slugging. If it ends up being Clark Schmidt, 44. 0.2% harder percentage, 259 expected uh, batting average. Both of these guys, righties that give up power that ever really not getting the K's you would look for. It's been problematic all the way around for both of them. I do not think I'll be backing them. Clark Schmidt still 23.3% K rate, not exactly abhorrent, but 20% for Luis Severino, the once uh, touted Luis Severino. Ooh, no, 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 no. Not good stuff. And Dave Dunning on the other side, if we expect it to be him, he's just whatever. He's a good, good pitcher, sub-3 ERA, sub-1.2 whip. Nothing flashy in the all, in the arsenal. You do have some lefties who can create a little bit of trouble, and the Yankees are getting healthier. Still a missing judge. That's kind of the important one. But DJ LeMayhew, Anthony Rizzo, John Carlos Stanton, they're going to be fine. Well, I don't know. AL East is just a gauntlet. It is all the time, it though, right? It's it's a gauntlet all the time. Let's just stay away from this baseball game and move along with our merry lives. Texas money line. If I had to assume that it's Dunning versus either one of these fools, but I'm assuming they probably will be favored there as well. So probably stay away altogether. <laughs> Bet MGM. Thank you for putting up the one line that's actually palatable in this entire game. And we're somehow putting it on Oakland. I'm I really I don't even I, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. But two and a half, it's a little bit different. The run line is two and a half at BetMGM. We got James Caprillion and Chris Bassett on the mound here. Chris Bassett, he doesn't believe in advanced analytics. That's what he told the people the other day. Maybe figure your shit out, dude. 334 X Woba, 430 expected slugging, sub 21% K rate. Not that he cares about any of those numbers. He just throws the ball. As for James Caprillion, 339 X Woba, 19.1% K rate, but... I'm seeing improvement. I am actually, I'm not even doing the comma, 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 caprillion bit to start off this segment because there's actual things that I can point to in the arsenal and it really comes down to a ground ball rate that actually exists at times. Against Tampa Bay, nine ground balls to five fly balls. Three earned runs that he still gave up with a solo shot in there, but I digress. Philadelphia went out there as a righty against that lefty gauntlet that we were talking about earlier. 
Only one earned in five and a third, six strikeouts to boot with it in Pittsburgh. Team that's been pretty good against uh, both handedness, I guess, this entire season. They've just surpassed expectations by being close to 500. Five walks, but still only four hits that he gave up. Only one earned. I don't know what to make of this, but it looks like the velocity is just a tick up, as are the strikeouts. They're coming along for the ride as well. I don't think the ground ball rate is uh, going to stay at 32.2% this entire season. He was up around 38.3% last year. So if we can get that ground ball rate to actually exist, that's how you avoid those long balls. That's how you avoid big innings. That's how you avoid harder contact. Just spike it on the ground. Even if they hit it hard, look at Framber Valdez. He gives up hard contact, but a 60% ground ball rate really does the trick for you. So James Caprillion... I think he can do just enough against this Toronto lineup to just not get completely murdered. And then I'm getting this kind of a number. Bo Bichette ended up getting scratched from Wednesday's game. I don't know if he ends up in this lineup. That's been the best hitter for Toronto so far this season. A 317 average, 14 homers, 852 OPS. If he's going to be out, that's a huge downgrade going to anybody else like a Biggio or uh, I suppose you could go to Brandon Belt DH and bring somebody else out there too. There's a lot of different options that they can have for the absence of Bo, Bo, Bo Bichette. They got to move somebody over to short though. Usually that'll end up being one of these little slappers, Espinal perhaps, but uh, I definitely don't feel good about having Bo Bichette out there for Toronto. And that's leaning me to Oakland, plus two and a half at BetMGM. Only spot where this run line is available. Everybody else has minus one and a half with major plus money. But I would rather jump over to the BetMGM side of this one. So check out our sponsor. Put it on this. Yeah, it feels gross. We have Milwaukee and Cleveland. And thank God Oakland and Cleveland are playing. Ended up on... A lot of pieces of that came throughout that series. It was going back and forth. I'm on Oakland. I'm on Cleveland. I'm on Oakland. Fine. Whatever. Wade Miley on the mound going up against Shane Bieber here in this spot. And I'm a little bit surprised that Wade Miley is getting absolutely no love just in terms of the hard hit that he's able to prevent. 31.8% hard hit percentage. He has a 14.8% K rate. And I've never been in love with his stuff. But he throws enough, he does enough off-kilter things with a four-seamer, sinker, cutter, slider, change, curve, throws a bunch of mixed pitches, has a split that he used to mix in from time to time. I mean, maybe he could just throw that randomly. But Shane Bieber on the other side, he's been in major regression mode. 46.6% hard hit percentage, 17.5% K rate. And Milwaukee, they at least have some lefties who can come to the table and do some damage. Yelich, you got... Rowdy Teles, I named two. How about that? We got two. Found two of them. It's great. Adamas, major regression. Luis Urias, major regression. But still, if I had to go anywhere here, I would be taking shots on the Milwaukee side. It actually grades out as close to a play for me. It's at plus 136 on FanDuel Sportsbook. If this were at plus 140, I would be pulling the trigger. Everywhere else has this at plus 125, plus 130. But it's just not a great spot to try to target, I suppose, considering Cleveland can do just enough. I don't know. It's It still feels like a Milwaukee spot for me. I will reassess tomorrow. If you want to know if this ends up on the card, hit me up on Twitter at Eric Lindquist. I'll be happy to let you know. Let's get ready to Manscaped. Yes, my friends, they are back on the program today, and we have a special offer for you. It is summer. It is the dog days of summer. It's getting hot. It's getting sweaty. Hey. Sometimes not in a good way. But if you want it to be hot and sweaty in a good way and you want to take care of yourself, this is the place for you. Manscaped.com. We're talking about uh, the toiletry bag. We're talking about the Performance Package 4.0, the Platinum Package 4.0. There are three great trimmers that they have sent to me that I've tried out and I cannot recommend highly enough. If you're sick of nicking and cutting yourself with a normal razor, the Lawnmower 4.0 with a lovely little light on the end of it to help you guide yourself around yourself check it out right now you simply shop in the video description box below you click on that link you go to the performance package 4.0 or just that lawnmower 4.0 and you get yourself access to manscape for 20 percent off with free shipping with the per purchase of any of those lovely packages that they have the weed whacker 2.0 as well for all of your nose ear wherever else hairs that might just be little and pesky use that thing i promise you it is the best in the business and to round it all out the beard kit the beard hedger pro kit this thing with the beard balm the beard conditioner beard shampoo 
telling you, if you're one of those lovely beard men, I wish I could grow a better one than I can. It's just scraggly and it is what it is. But I used to have it. I, I made it work. I wish I had that back in the day. That beard hedger kit would surely have done the damage for me. So check out all the great offerings over at Manscaped, specifically that Lawnmower 4.0. Take care of yourself before you wreck yourself with a razor. That's what I will say. They're the right tools for the, jam, uh, for the job. Manscaped.com. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring our lovely little program. Off we go. Five games to go. Let's get to it. We got the Sox facing the Sox. It's going to be a lot of fun here in south side of Chicago. Man named Leroy Brown. Jim Crouch, come on now. It's good people. Lucas Giolito, though, going off against Brian Bayo. And hey, Bayo, probably the best outing of his season. Well, he's had a couple of really good ones now, but against the Yankees in prime time, the man went out. Eight strikeouts, just one earned run in seven innings. He's had a couple of games where he's had some depth there and back-to-back -back starts against the Yankees. Sure, is it a little bit of a disseminated lineup without Aaron Judge? Of course it is, but three earned runs and two started, starts against them back-to-back -back with 14 innings covered and a ground ball rate that is going through the roof. The roof. The roof is not on fire because the ball's on the ground. The fire's on the ground. I don't really have a joke there, but here's the problem, friends. Eventually, he faces a pitcher that's undervalued on the other side as a result of how good he's been. And that's where we're running into here. You have plus 102 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I would not like this at minus 105, minus 110 here. But Chicago's the dog and a pretty decent dog over here against the Red Sox on the other side with Lucas Giolito on the mound. And the same way we talked about Bayo's improvement, I like what we're seeing out of Lucas Giolito, his last couple starts. Looks like the velocity is just kind of ticking back up. Even though he got himself in a little bit of trouble, three walks in two of his last three, he's finding ways out of the work against the Yankees. Six innings, no hits, seven Ks. Ended up hitting 100 pitches. They took him out anyway. Seven innings pitched against Miami. Found his way around that one with just one walk, eight strikeouts. Looking really, really solid. Love seeing the strikeouts back for him. Think there was positive regression in his life. The ERA is down to a 3.54 and a 1.24 whip. Now, do the Red Sox have the better lineup between the two? Yes. Yes, they do. But this is in Chicago. I feel pretty confident that Lucas Giolito long-term has been the better pitcher between the two for a long, long time. So even though it's been a small sample size of Brian Bayo really figuring it out, I don't completely believe in a 58.4% ground ball rate routinely here. Does have a 45% hard hit percentage, does have a 430 expected slugging. So there are still some blemishes there. And the White Sox lineup, it's healthier. It's not good by any means, but Luis Robert, Eloy Jimenez, Andrew Benintendi, there's at least some pieces there. Jake Berger, can I get you a burger and fries? How many homers does he have on the season now? 16, he's still at 16. He's been at 16 for a little while. Either way, my friends, Chicago White Sox as the dogs, plus money dogs here, money line. I like it. The Coors Field we go. Uh, Shohei Otani, Mike Trout at altitude. <laughs> Real rappy. It's going to be a little bit crazy. And uh, I love crazy. So there's that. I love crazy. I want to see how I got these scars. Probably from Kyle Freeland being on the mound and hitting baseballs really hard. He's the southpaw going for Colorado. The southpaw going for the Angels. Patrick Sandoval, who I would call a little bit of a disappointment this season, 266 expected batting average, just a 17.3% K rate, 51.6% ground ball rate is bailing him out a little bit there. But Kyle Freeland on the other side, oh boy. Good luck to you against these Angels that, uh, I don't know if you noticed, they tune up some, they tune up some lefties from time to time. They do, however, not have Anthony Rendon, not that it matters. Anthony Rendon's 100 or something like that. I don't know. I might have exaggerated that. 109 WRC plus, 164 ISO. Across the board, the Angels are just lefty mashers. They are. And I brought up Trout. I brought up Otani. They're probably not going to have the numbers attached to it. And I think Hunter Renfro and Taylor Ward get enough love in the marketplace. But do you know who doesn't from time to time? Brandon Drury. Where are my puddle of mud fans at? Everything's so Drury and everyone's so fake. Do you enjoy it? 
I did too. 45.6% hard hit percentage, 432 expected slugging. Uh, can you take it all away? Can you take it all away when you shoved it in my face? This pain you gave to me, he's going to give pain to Kyle Freeland. I found a way to bring that back. I, I'm shocked myself. Brandon Drury to Homer, as long as it's better than plus 330 here in Coors, he's going to hit one long and far into that Denver sky. Washington and San Diego. God, I hate this game. And well, we obviously know that Patrick Corbin and the Nationals going into San Diego, you're looking at major minus money and the public is going to move this one like crazy and I won't really care. San Diego, minus 245, minus 275 at BetMGM. That's a pretty large discrepancy that exists already. If I had to do anything, I would probably go to that minus... 245 here right now, but I'm actually going to be looking at the run line mainly because some of you will just make fun of me if I recommend a minus 245 favorite, but whatever. We're looking at Joe Musgrove on the other side. He's been awesome. Sub 30% hard hit percentage, 278 X Woba, 351 expected slugging, and he's doing that without even strikeouts in play. 3.10 expected ERA would be the best of his career. Yes, he got a late start to this season, but sometimes that's a good thing. Don't have to just Deal with a month, month and a half soreness or things coming into the summer. He dropped the weight on his foot. Probably not the way he would want to take those a uh, month, month and a half off. But either way, it's Patrick Corbin on the other side facing the Padres. They can inflict some damage against lefties. I, I hope you noticed that. A 112 WRC plus, a lot of that. Because Fernando Tatis is really good at baseball. He's been on the betting card a lot of late. And he's been on the betting card a lot of late in terms of RBIs. And in terms of just raw power, 15 homers now in a pretty limited sample size, 228, 228 at bats. I mean, this guy is on another planet. He's like running hot, beyond hot, beyond hot. It slowed down a little bit there in San Francisco, even though they won 10 nothing today. He didn't have to do anything. Must have been nice to watch his teammates do something for a change. Yeah. I feel like LeBron in Cleveland circa 2006 coming really, really soon. But either way, San Diego minus one and a half. Just a lean because I really can't get behind this number. I would try minus 122 at FanDuel Sportsbook. It's a lot better than anywhere else in the marketplace. And I bet that one changes. But still, I would want minus 115 to make this a play. And I do not think we get it. To Dodger Stadium we go. And it is going to be ruckus. And why? The Houston Astros coming to town. And let me tell you a little something about the Los Angeles Dodgers. There is not a team on planet Earth that they hate more than the Houston Astros. I'm banging trash cans, if you couldn't tell. We have J.P. France there on the mound going up against one Emmett Sheehan, who had a no-hitter going in his debut. It was unbelievable stuff. Of course, Dave Roberts was going to pull him, but also... 89 pitches. I probably would have pulled him too. But a double A, a 1.86 ERA, 0.89 whip, 88 Ks in 53 and a third innings. Holy mother of God. Now that was double A ball. Just want to throw it out there. But he looked really good against San Francisco. It was really filthy. And well, I don't know if it continues. I at least know Houston has some big league hitters on the other side, still without Jordan Alvarez, which is the most important. But Kyle Tucker, a lot of righties. You're going to be paying close attention to this one. I want to try to take a target on some regression there, but I'm not pulling the trigger here as of yet. This one could really go either way for me. I could run into some Dodger money and be all right with it, but I was actually going to be leaning on the over of eight and a half here because J J uh, JP France here on the other side, 3.42 ERA, 1.2 a whip, has looked pretty decent, but he's had a pretty okay string of games. He faced off against Cincinnati, was okay there, but then gave up some runs to Cleveland, got to face a lackluster Minnesota lineup, lackluster Milwaukee lineup, Cubs, White Sox, Seattle. Not exactly a murderer's row of teams. The Dodgers, murderers. 110 WRC plus against lefties here on the CS. He's a righty, so I have to change my filter here for one second. Do, 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 do. Phenomena. 109 WRC plus. See, I knew it was pretty close. Uh, we're talking a 192 ISO though against righties on the season. Third best in baseball. Yeah, Freddie Freeman probably doing a lot of damage from the left side there. You get Peralta, you get Mookie Betts against anybody. It doesn't really matter. So I'm leaning the over of eight and a half purely because I don't think Sheehan could just go out and throw another no hitter through six, but 
Maybe he's just that dude. I don't think we want to find out. I'm either going to be Dodgers or I'm going to be on the over of this one. It's not grading out well for me on either side. Going to be very interested to see where lines decide to land on this one. Currently, minus 145 best available money line for Dodgers. Hmm. Maybe some late night hammer action. But our final lock of the night, here's the run line that I was anticipating that I knew. As soon as this line got posted, I was like, yeah, I think my model's going to like this one. I think it's going to like it a lot. It's the Arizona Diamondbacks. And we're going to be targeting them for once. Going with uh, going with Zach Davies on the mound, he's facing off against Logan Webb and the San Francisco Giants. And Zach Davies, he's traditionally been somebody that I have devalued as one of the worst starting pitchers in baseball, going back to his Milwaukee days. Now, we can take a little bit of a tour back to like 2015, 2016, I have a couple of buddies tell me that he's going to be the truth. He's going to be so good. He weighs 105 pounds. And th- I mean, stop it. Stop it. He's never had a K rate above 23% in a single major league season in his career. In fact, he's had only one season above 20% in his entire major league career. He had a 6.27 expected ERA, 4.56 expected ERA his last two seasons. And this year, back up to 4.40 expected ERA. Now he's just 30, but everybody was talking about improvement or he can change this up or that sinker can actually really, really be his primary pitch. No, 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 friends. He threw that 53% of the time last season. It had a 493 slugging attached to it, a 531 expected slugging. He got lucky last year to be throwing that pitch. That's why the usage has dropped off from 53% that he threw it last year all the way down to just 36.6% of the time. He has to be going to that changeup more. And, well, he's not even throwing that one more. He's throwing a fastball 16.8% of the time. He never even had a fastball before. I think it's big league hitters start to figure it out because currently he's just throwing that fastball to lefties at the moment. 80 times he's thrown it to lefties. Only 20 fastballs that he's thrown to righties all season long. They're going to figure him out and he's going to start getting lit up a lot. The changeup is a legitimately good pitch and it's still getting hit up. A 609 slugging, 460 expected slugging, does have a 36% whiff percentage, but sometimes your weapons can also be your downfalls. How about that? Take that to Freud and suck it. All right, let's finish it out, my friends. We have on the other side of this one, Logan Webb. It's going to be a lot of fun to be backing him because I love the ground ball rate. 61.5% this season. What? He does have a 46.2% hard hit percentage, but he's basically the right-handed, I almost said Jordan Alvarez. He's basically the left-handed Framber Valdez on the other side here. A 303 X Woba, 24.5% K rate, pitches way deep into games. And San Francisco was able to rest a lot of their important bullpen arms because they lost by infinity to the Padres on Thursday. Sometimes your weapons can be your downfall. Put that on a Hallmark card. Give it to your dad for next Father's Day. Actually, don't do that. That's really stupid. 3.11 ERA, 1.11 whip. My friends, it is a lock button. Put a betting ticket in your Father's Day card for today. Even though it was Sunday. I don't know what I'm getting at. I'm very tired. It's been a long week. Friends, five days straight of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. We head out with a lock. San Francisco on the run line, minus one and a half, plus money attached to it, plus one ton, plus 120 at DraftKings Sportsbook. Ah, oh, and now I sleep. And that does it for another edition of Liddy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do? Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays on the board for Friday's slate. Going to be a good one. Thursday was a pretty tame card for me, even though got the parlay across. That was good stuff. Didn't get the Randy Rosarena home run. Shane McClanahan gets hurt. Kind of a wash of a day. So looking forward to Friday where the betting card is active. I'm sure I'm going to be running into some player props as well. You can check that out in my betting card just by checking out BetMGM. Again, completely free. You're going to get those two months of premium access to Odd Shopper, uh, to the premium Discord with myself, Ben Raza, Eitan Chander, all the great people. Speaking of Eitan Chander, he's going to be along for the ride for you this weekend per usual. And BetMGM, only for 21 and over. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Until next time, friends, I'll be back Monday. I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets on Friday and this entire weekend.